Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 178. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Robert Mackey has dug up wingames backslash gg backslash sync sub. Well, one thing's for sure, if we're not sinking submarines, then this name is a lie. <laughs> or unless we're, like, playing with submarines in, like, a kitchen sink or something? I don't know. Uh, where is it? Um... <laughs> I swear this happens, like, half the time. I'll go to pick a game out, and I can't find it for whatever reason. Uh, there it is. Sink sub. Um, got an install, got BWCC, so we know it's written in Borland. Um, let's look at the help file. Sync sub for Windows version 1.3. That looks like a depth charge if I ever saw one. How to play. Goal of the game is to destroy the hostile mean submarines. <laughs> the redundant, e the redundantly evil, evil submarines. And try to stay alive while doing it. At your disposal, you have a minesweeper, spelled wrong, and Swedish... Not capitalized Marine's latest weapon, the Subsensitive Sink Bomb, aka Depth Charge. Hey, don't laugh, they're pretty sophisticated, handled right. A necessary space before the exclamation mark. This is a, this is, um, this has so far been a grammar's, grammar editor's worst nightmare, even though the language is fine. <laughs> like the actual, like, the actual writing is fine, just not the writing, if that makes any sense. <laughs> okay, and our buttons are left to move the ship to left, or brakes if the boat is moving right. Okay, so I got the funny feeling that we don't actually hold the keys just based on the way it's saying that, but I guess we'll find out. Um, one, to release a sink bomb to the left side. Three, to release it to the right side. So that's kind of like if it was on the numeric keypad. Might try it that way. Um, F1 to activate help, F2 start a new game, P to pause, R to resume. <laughs> um, that's actually kind of annoying when the pause and unpause keys are different, <laughs> but I understand why some people would do that. Okay, the person's Swedish, so it kind of does make sense that their English wouldn't be perfect, but apparently it was done by an a Anders Wilborg, Anders Wilborg. And was apparently $10 for the registration, according to this. Okay, let's see what we got. Sig Sub by Anders Wilborg. Program not registered. Evaluate for 30 days. Well, um, this is different. Well, like, I mean, the, the game window itself actually looks kind of neat. But what I mean is there's not only no maximize button, which, you know, doesn't surprise me. It's a single border winner. There's, there's no minimize button. In fact, the game doesn't allow you to minimize it. <laughs> That's kind of obnoxious. Uh, although this is actually kind of interesting. They've got um stats in the menu bar. I don't think I've ever seen very many games actually do that. Adding additional info into the menu bar that's not part of the menu. Okay, so new game. Oh, we got sound effects. Okay, yeah, I was right. You just push the key once to start moving. Oh, they're launching attacks at me, too. Uh, okay, well, that didn't go so well. Oh, you actually have different speeds you can move. Okay, that's good to know. Oh, and it looks like I actually have limited ammo here. I mean, these sound effects are clearly stealed from somewhere, but... Sorry, stolen from somewhere. Oh, now I got an... Oh, it's the registration airplane. <laughs> Register now! So not sure exactly how I'm restoring my ammunition. I think it's just sort of coming back when the depth charge is actually hit. I'm just going to wait for those two shots to hit the bottom there and see if I'm right about that. Okay, so yeah, so even though you have limited ammo, it's actually counting your, like, your shot limits. 
I'm like just barely missing him every time. You've really got to lead this target here. Okay, one of those got to hit. There we go. Okay, second level. So, so far, I like the fact that the game plays fine. <laughs> it is a little obnoxious with the sound effects, but... You know, there's nothing actually inherently wrong with the gameplay here. It's very basic, I'll put it that, put it like that, but... You know, I understand what's going on. It's not extraordinarily difficult. You have multiple speeds you can move the boat at, which is dependent on how many times you push the key, not how long you hold it for. So it kind of makes coming to a stop easy, which is nice. Yeah, for as basic a game as this is, it actually plays perfectly fine. So is it worth $10? I mean, depends on if you like submarine games and launching depth charges or whatever they were, <laughs> whatever flavor they were being called in this game. But yeah, it plays perfectly fine. Definitely would have been worth a $10 price tag. So, yeah, no complaints. Next up, Dick DeYoung dug up DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash name. Well, clearly the game is not named <laughs> or has a name, but it's a name is name. I don't know. This is weird. Um, we got a bass file. So that means that whatever game this is, it was written in basic or some flavor of basic. Might have been basic A, might have been Q basic. Actually, could it have been QBasic? 1990? Maybe. Um, anyways, well, let's try playing it. Um, it did something there. Um, the Great Archaic Name Bank. Okay, so first choose a gender. I guess we'll start out as male. So first name. Okay, so it's just going through a bunch of um, stuff in its database, I guess. We've got Marstein, Granolas. Bostreth, Oddtor, Halorid, Redsard. We'll go with a Redsard. Redsard, Mustart, Dowdy. <laughs> there you go. Dowdy, Redsard, Mustart. <laughs> um, title Elf Winner, <laughs> Faith Stealer, Gate Hacker, Worm Striker, Soul Toppler. <laughs> okay, so it's just combining two different things together. Soul Murderer, Goblin Binder, Arm Cracker, Meat Slinger. I like Meat Slinger. Um, noble Title. Um, yeah, we'll go with Dictator. And Place. Um, what should his place be? The Vile Tray. Perfect. So Dictator, Dowdy, Redsard Must Start, the Meat Slinger of Vile Tray. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. And also completely Pointless and useless, but um, what's the tavern thing do? Potter and Heart? Oh, it just lets you um, generate um, tavern names. So Wild Wand Mead Hall, Old and Copper Piece Rest House, Prince's Arms Ale House, Queen and Mastodon, Bat and Swallow Cellar, Jackal and Hippogriff, <laughs> Slippery Jolly Doe and Dog Cellar. <laughs> okay, so. This is kind of, um, this is kind of a pointless program, but at the same time, I kind of have a little bit of respect for it because one, doing this kind of, um, name generation thing isn't as easy as it sounds because you have to make sure when you're doing this kind of thing that everything sounds like it could be something like that. That's what I'm, when I'm, as I'm parsing through the, like these tavern possibilities here like here we see Jacqueline octopus lodge like i mean there are places that are named stuff like this like there's a there's a couple taverns in the city i live in that have these archaic names to them that are something like out of a video game it's like this is like these, these sound legit hangman and troll cellar churl and count like i could see a tavern actually being called churl and count <laughs> so it's like I have a bit of res I have a bit of respect for this program, despite the fact that not almost nothing it generates would actually be useful. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's just it's just a fun little thing to mess around with. Next up, we have a very brief team dig from Jonathan Gosselin and Ben Jemmett. Win games backslash comp backslash coffee. 
Part of me is worried that this is just going to be one of those stupid little desktop icon things. It just does some sort of animation or something, but I guess we're going to find out. I got a coffee.txt here. Coffee mug version 1.0 by Toggle Booleans. Yeah, this is just going to be another one of those icon things. Well, this one looks like it might be a little more interactive than some of this stuff. It says here that if you move a window on top of your coffee mug, you may spill it. And then if that happens, you can upright your mug by selecting upright mug from the menu. And might leave coffee rings on the desktop when you move it. And then it will get cold after about 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> I'm not waiting that long to test that feature. Um, given the fact that this is going to be sensitive to the windows, let's just start it with the window in this state. Coffee. Um, yeah, we got a coffee mug. Yay, it's coffee mug. Yay, coffee mug, coffee mug, coffee mug. <sighs> what does my life come to? <laughs> uh, we can't really right click it. Um, we've got an about mug. The quintessential desktop metaphor. Okay, then. Well, I guess we can try moving a window over it, so... Whoops. Yep, that spilt it. And now we got coffee on the desktop. In fact, we get coffee on the desktop everywhere we move it now. Well, it seems like the coffee stains are not actual objects. Rather, instead, it's just being blitted to the desktop. And if the desktop were to be redrawn, yeah, then it just disappears. But I guess we can upright the mug somehow, like that. And there's no coffee in it anymore, and we're leaving little coffee rings now. Well, I do have to say, this is at least a little more interactive than some of these little programs we've seen before. But it's still basically useless, so yeah, there you go. And our last dig for today comes from RetroSwim. Win games backslash GG backslash block 11. Hopefully this will actually be like a game. Well, it's in the GG folder, so that's usually a good sign. Um, block 11. Now I got a couple of setups, and we also got the executable, so hopefully it runs without having to run the setup. But anyways, block 11, copyright 9394 Chemsoft by Russell Kemsley. Well, that explains the name. Um, you require a three and a half inch floppy drive. Um, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Probably to originally install it, but... And even though I don't know what it is yet, it seems that the registration is only $5.52. And the $0.52 cents is for postage. So that's actually a pretty cheap price for Windows software. So let's see what this is about here. Well, it looks like it might be a card game of some kind, because it looks like it's using the cards.vbx or something. Unless that's in reference to one of the other games that he made here. But in any case, let's see what we have here. Um, block 11. Wait, <laughs> I only just started the game and I'm already getting a game over? What? What? <laughs> I lost the game before I even started playing. Okay, that was kind of weird. Um, I'm actually kind of curious if it's going to do that again if I try starting it again. No, it, it started up fine that time. And again. And again. And again. That's hilarious. So, however the game however the game rules are supposed to work it managed to shuffle me a 100% unwinnable unable to do anything board the very first time i booted it like i mean i'm going to guess the odds of that happening is actually really freaking low but i mean come on <laughs> you got to detect for stuff like that when you're making these games you can't just assume that it's like going to work going to be a perfectly viable perfectly viable game every single time and it looks like it is pulling from the um standard windows card stuff because none of these are anything yeah these are all the um the standard card types it's just you have to select them from a menu instead of like a nice list of them although we can change the background color so we can have a nice green background okay so the pack is shuffled and nine cards are dealt face up in three rows of three 
The pips on any two cards add up to 11. For example, an ace and a 10, a two and a nine, five and a six. Click on them. A card from the stock will cover the two cards. Count court cards, jacks, kings, and queens don't count in making 11s, but if a jack, queen, and king are all present on the carpet, you may cover them by clicking on all three. Interesting. So you continue in this way until there's no cards that add up to 11 and no set of three court cards. Okay. So, seems like a pretty simple premise. So, 10 and ace. And those just got replaced with new cards. Um... What else can we do here? I got two and nine. And that's it. Okay, obviously we're going to try that again. Um, so new game. Uh, what do we got this time? Now we got the five and the six. And three and the eight. And then two and nine. We can do a king, queen, jack. Ted and ace. Well, this game is going... Well, pretty darn well this time, actually. Although this really is 100% luck. You have no control over this whatsoever. 9 and 2, 8 and 3, and I win. Yep, that, that was it. Okay, that was um block 11. It's an interesting card game, but ultimately 100% luck. There is literally no strategy to this game whatsoever. You just play through it, and once you get stuck, that's your score. There's no... Like, the, the thing is, is that the actions you take don't influence the effect of progression through the, through the deck. It's not like a game of Klondike Solitaire, where you have a decision to make with two different cards, and one card's going to reveal one card, and another might reveal another card. But here, the cards are only revealed from the deck itself. And you're covering up cards that you've already used. And there's no special considerations. Like, there's no cross... There's no cross-communication, in a sense, between the different kinds of cards. You're always going to match up an 8 with a 3. You're always going to match up a 7 with a 4. You're always going to match up a king with a queen and a jack. There's no variation there, which means the game will play out the exact same every single time with the same shuffling of cards, meaning it's 100% luck.